Whoa, 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 what's up everybody? Ian here with Salty Aquatics. First things first though, before we dive into this topic, I'm still looking for name suggestions. So please, 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 if you got any, put them down in the comments below. I really, really take your advice and I will appreciate the comments. So go do it guys, go do it. Today, however, we're gonna be talking about water changes. Now this is a very important topic if you're new to the reefing or aquatic community in the first place because this is what's going to give your tank the ability to thrive. Now I have seen countless videos of people online telling us and showing us how they've set up their system to where they never have to do a water change. And let me tell you, in my experience, and I've been doing this for a while now, I have never once come across a tank that actually thrives without doing water changes. It is possible you can build a balanced ecosystem that can self-sustain over long periods of time without doing water changes, but the overall health can be much better even in those systems that are doing well if you do regular water changes. So, with that said, there's two main ways of doing water changes dilution and replacement. Now that you know what we're doing, I need to get a water change ready. Don't you see how fast and easy it is to set up a water change? This is why you should have no excuses as for doing them on a regular basis. Anyways, so the first method that we're going to talk about is the replacement. Replacement is good for a couple things. Replacement is going to be the best way of nutrient export. So if you have high nutrients that you need to pull out of your tank, the best way to do so is definitely going to be to do a replacement style water change. However, a replacement style water change can cause stress on the fish, especially if done regularly like we're supposed to be doing because of the change in salinity, pH, and other levels of various nutrients in the water for say um, they're not really nutrients I'm referring to the calcium the magnesium and stuff which aren't going to cause a dramatic stress necessarily on your fish but can cause a stress on corals and invertebrates so keep this in mind when you're doing your water changes so for replacement the first thing we got to do is take some water out of the tank to do that I've got just a simple piece of vinyl tubing that I'm going to start a siphon and put it into another bucket Alright, so for demonstration purposes, I have not done a complete water change due to the fact that I don't need to do this method of water change for the entire water change. I just wanted to show you guys how it would go for you guys that want to know. For your dilution water changes, these are my preferred method of water changes. The reason being is that they do not cause any stress on your fish in the long term. They're very, very gentle. Think of it as acclimating your entire tank to a new batch of salt. You don't want to take a fish out of the bag and dump it right into the salt water tank because it's going to cause a lot of distress. It may survive, it may not. Now dilution is the same concept. You know, you want to acclimate your fish. We're doing the same thing, but instead of acclimating the fish to your tank water, you're acclimating the tank water to new tank water, if that makes sense. So. Same concept, you're just going to pump your new water into the tank, make sure it's of, the, of a close salinity, close uh, temperature, those are the main two things I look for, and then I'll pump the water into the tank and let the entire tank rise. At this time I cut off my protein skimmer and any other uh, water level uh, sensitive equipment and let the tank fill up as high as I possibly can and let, right when it gets to the top. I start allowing the water 
to I, I start a siphon out of the display portion of the tank into a secondary bucket to start removing that water. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, for dilution, I leave everything running, keep it cycling, and I will use a pump to pump the water out of my water change bucket into the tank. And then once all this water is in this tank, I will then siphon it back out to get the water level to be at the right height. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I will get some close-ups of the water level rising. And I just put my tube down into the first chamber of my sump. That way the water can actually go all the way through my filtration. That way if there's anything that happened to get into my water change bucket, it gets pulled out by my filter before, you know, anything else happens. So I'm going to start pumping this water in here, cut off my protein skimmer so we don't have a redo of yesterday that's causing me to have to go through all of this again in two days. And yeah, we'll show you how the water comes up and kind of, you know, you'll, you'll see, you'll see, you'll understand. And just like that, the water is pumping. Now, what's beautiful about this method, I don't have to worry about anything. I can sit here, and while this pumps in, which it will take a few minutes, I can literally just forget about it, which is awesome, because I'm a lazy person at the end of the day. Uh, I'm not too lazy. I, I, I'm fairly lazy. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty lazy. And water changes, regular water changes, can be difficult. With all the water pumped into the tank now, I'm going to go ahead and siphon the amount of water I need out of the tank. I know exactly how much I need to fill up my trash can because I fill it up to the same point every time for my water changes. So really easy, I don't have to pay attention to where the water level is in the tank or anything, I just siphon it out until I hit there, I uh, hit the mark inside my trash can. So you know, let's do that. That's all there is to it guys, uh, super simple. In the video coming up in the future, we're actually going to renovate my entire system. Not the entire system, but mainly just just the way I'm going to be doing We're going we're gonna to be making an upgrade to make this even easier for me. So uh, be looking for that video coming out in the future as well. These two methods can be actually applied together to maintain a healthier reef tank or aquarium in general based on the situation that you're using them. So, for instance, recently, yesterday, let's be honest, yesterday, I had a situation where my tank had overfilled due to my over top off malfunctioning. Not an issue, the auto top off I use uh, has an automatic cutoff that if it runs for too long, it will cut, cut, the, uh, cut the power to the solenoid that allows the water to flow in and it won't fill up any further. This provides me the comfort that if with my automatic uh, uh, auto top off that I never have to fill up a reservoir or anything, it's tapped straight into my RO unit. If it ever malfunctions, I know my tank isn't gonna overflow because I have to manually go reset that after that happens. Not to mention I also have an audible alarm that goes off when it happens so I know when this is going on. What happened though is the water level did rise enough, just enough to where my protein skimmer was too high out of the water and that caused it to overflow. And I hadn't cleaned it out this week yet and there was a lot, a lot of gunk in there that ended up getting put back into the system. The entire tank got cloudy and it's still recovering. There's still a lot of cloudiness in this tank from this happening yesterday. In that kind of situation, the replacement method was probably going to be the best method because I accidentally dumped a ton of nutrients back in the tank that had already been pulled out and I caught it too late so all of it had gotten put back into the system. So doing a complete replacement of the water change that I had prepared or that you would put together at the time of that kind of incident would be best because at that point the shock of the nutrients put back into the water from the protein skimmer overflowing 
is going to be bigger than the shock of having a full replacement of the fresh salt water that we have mixed, putting it back in the tank after removing the bad one. The idea with the replacement is to remove as many nutrients as you can as quickly as you can, and that's why I say it's situational. All the rest of the time, 100% of the rest of the time, I use dilution, and I, I feel like dilution is the best way to go. The reason being is no matter how much we test our water before we do our water change and mix the salt, it's always going to be a little bit off. If you're doing the proper sized water changes regularly, then that can have a dramatic effect on the fish and it causes them to have a constant change. If I'm doing weekly water changes and say the salinity is off by uh, one thousandth of a salinity, then that is enough that week after week it's ch constantly changing just enough to cause fish stress. If I'm doing the dilution method, however, that little bit that's different as I'm pumping it into the tank is going to mix with the old salinity. That tiny deviation in the salinity is going to actually become very much of a wash. It's averaging out and it's not as big of a, a change. Now that we're done with all the serious stuff, I figured we'll come up here and take a little gant at these, uh, these little black mollies playing around up here. They're fun to watch. They're entertaining fish. And, uh, well, yeah, they're doing really good really really good so for any of you wondering how they were doing here they are all six are alive doing well eating algae like crazy and uh, I'm really getting antsy to get them into the tank so that's all I got for you guys today I hope you enjoyed this video and if you didn't well tell me why you didn't down in the comments below along with your name suggestions so I can improve this channel so I bring you guys better quality media that you enjoy watching so you guys keep coming back and hanging out with me. But before we get off this video, let's talk about what's coming down the drain. Now, in the previous clip that you just watched, you just saw the new additions to my tank. Once again, if you watched my last week's or last Thursday's video, you would have seen it, those guys as well. Those guys next Thursday are being put into this tank and we're gonna watch what they do to destroy this they're actually going into the tank tomorrow uh, and then I will be uh, documenting the effects that they have on the algae over the 48 hours before I should finish up the video that goes live on Thursday so you guys will see some of that footage but be looking for that video and on top of that, starting with the new year, I have a big project coming up that I will be announcing, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy. On top of that, I have a brand new playlist, a uh, brand new series that I'm bringing to the YouTube channel where we're going to go over fish profiles, where we're going to go into in-depth uh, in depth on each species of fish that I'm keeping to start out with, and then branch out to all the popular species in the aquarium com uh, community, focusing primarily on saltwater, and then switching into freshwater for some of the popular fish there to give you guys some information about these species, species of fish that you potentially will be keeping yourselves. So be looking out for that. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that like button. Smash the subscribe button if you hadn't. Turn notifications on if you not want to know when I'm going to be posting my next videos at the earliest time. Leave your comments down below if you didn't like this video, if you did like this video, if you got name suggestions. Gosh, darn it. I just want to hear from you guys. So, with that all said, have a great day. I'm Ian. This is Salty Aquatics. Take it easy.